from the midline to the right beyond the anterior border of the sternocleidomastoid and 3 cm to the left and vertically it is extending around 6 cm below the thyroid cartilage up to the suprasternal notch the surface of the swelling appears bosselated and irregular in shape with well defined margins and which moves with deglutition and skin over the swelling was normal and trachea appears in midline and the lower border of the swelling is visible and no other visible swellings were noted on palpation there was no local rise of temperature or tenderness over the swelling and an asymmetrical swelling of size 9 into 6 cm um, um, present in the thyroid region with uh, extent as as i mentioned earlier and with consistency is variable with alternate soft and firm, firm areas and the plane of the swelling is deep to deep fascia and the lower border of the swelling was palpable and it is mobile in horizontal and vertical planes uh, the trachea is in midline and bilateral carotid pulses were felt and there was no uh, palpable lymph nodes in the neck wait wait pawn yes sir go back my, uh, my question to gurushan tapas sir and uh, raveshankar sir uh, do you agree with bosselated uh, appearance sir uh i think uh, you know just for the photographs may not be Iranjan. not able to... yes sir yes Niranjan, uh, uh, shall I mention there are many things which uh, probably yeah. I may not. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. That is I, my question. Next question was that. Yes, you can, sir. A uh, Pawan. Yes, sir. Yeah, looking at the photograph and I appreciate that video you have put. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, like Niranjan mentioned, uh, you cannot say for a thyroid swelling bosselated surface. Okay. When do you say any size criteria? You know. for bosselation and nodularity sir if it is more than 4 cm then we call it as bosselated yeah 3 cm yes sir thyroid swellings uh, usually for a liver uh, yeah enlarged liver we uh, we accept this okay sir if it is obviously seen i don't know this whether we should accept in the photograph what you are showing one you and second you one. said second uh, in the midline if you see that photograph uh, the lower border is not made out in the suprasternal area in the notch area suprasternal notch even after deglutition it is not very well made out like in the lateral side see that see that in the video okay sir okay has he uh, uh, undergone uh, any surgery in the past this lady no sir because no, there sir. looks like a scar mark scar in the midline yeah this scar is a scar Uh, what is that is it not a scar no sir no history of any surgeries no no what that cursor you have put that that area very what ha uh, that, that what is that you trace that you on either side it is going that side also that looks like a scar play the video pawn yes sir looks like uh, she has undergone surgery if you not elicited and if you don't know probably it is going to be a blunder Sir, you should be very careful. Sir, I asked her. Niranjan, sir, Niranjan, for you it looks I, like a scar. I, yes, sir, it appears like a scar. No, ah, it appears like a scar. It either Anyone? appears like a scar or a, a crease, skin crease. Okay. Skin crease, but it is the... correct. It is yes? continuing on the left side, just based on the, this. I don't know, sir. Uh, your case only, no, sir. Uh, was there a scar or was there any history previously? No. Ravi Shankar, sir. Huh? Oh, this this uh, is oh this is a, a, your case. Uh, your name the case is do. Ah, uh, she has she has not had any surgery, no. Okay, okay, Definitely okay. Not. And second, in palpation, you started with tenderness and uh, and uh, raised temperature. For a thyroid swelling, you should never mention these points. Okay, sir. You'll be inviting many questions like when do you get uh, when a thyroid swelling becomes tender. So you need to be prepared for that. When do you expect the raised temperature in a thyroid swelling? okay so these things should be avoided for a thyroid swelling and once you say it moves with a deglutition the immediate next finding should be lower border okay sir immediate next finding because you are doing that same in the same sitting lower sir, border sir i agree with you sir left side we could not get below the swelling even 
uh, after deglutition, you yeah. couldn't uh, actually see the lower border and yeah, uh, neither could you feel it. So Correct. it was going below in a retrosternal, going down into the retrosternal area. Yeah, it's an important uh, finding, Pawan. Uh, lower border is not made out even after deglutition. So so important. You understand what Sir is telling. So you have to mention all about the swelling and yes. then trachea should not come all the way suddenly in the middle. Okay. Trachea is after the swelling. Correct. Okay. Sir, was trachea in the midline or is it pushed to the left slightly? The trachea was in the midline and uh, and uh, this one, the surface was nodular. Easily, not. I think you can say the surface was very nodular. Okay. Not basilated as he says. I think it is definitely, you know, we could feel a lot of nodules. And there is one more thing which uh, I think it should not be brought in because he says... Uh, Soft and uh, what is that consistency, Pawan? Uh, sir, uh, soft. How do you explain soft. that soft and uh, variable consistency? Gurushanta Pasar, do you agree in thyroid swelling, variable consistency? Yeah, variable or firm is accepted, but soft, uh, you should be careful. Soft, that is what? Soft you, and you firm. You cannot have a soft consistency. Yeah, it can be firm. Best way is to firm. If it is really hard, you put that as hard swelling. Okay, sir. How do you explain soft consistency, Pawan? What do you mean by soft? Uh, sir, uh, um, sir, uh, we will take reference as that ear log wheel, sir. Uh, no, no, no. I know what is soft. How do you explain soft consistency in a thyroid swelling? What do you mean by soft consistency in a thyroid swelling? Ravi Shankar, sir, was it really soft? No, or? no, there is no soft. It was firm consistency. I think it uniformly firm. There was it was not hard. It was uniformly firm, and uh, surface was nodular. And uh, I, I think rest of the findings that he has said, it though the uh, you know the clinically the right lobe was more, more obviously you know enlarged, but uh, left lobe seemed to be going down into the retro retrosternal area. So we can't really say whether we, which of the two lobes are more enlarged. No, uh, that is okay. But uh, this consistency, I think uh, you should see. Yeah, yeah. See, I don't think even the cysts in thyroid will feel firm. That is a, correct. I don't that is think a thyroid, any, thyroid paradox. I think only maybe, you know, a uh, hyperthyroid gland may, you know, may appear soft. I have never actually described any thyroid swelling as soft. So I can't yes. really tell. You know, Gurushanta Prasad, if, if there is anything you can add. Rest is, uh, we will not confuse them. Better don't mention soft consistency in a guide. Correct, correct, correct. Yes, we'll and you will, you will be, be probably landing up in soup in exams if you mention all the soft consistency variable. Preferably stick to one. And if there are genuine hard areas, then okay, variable consistency. Okay, sir. And I think once you mentioned from swelling moves to deglutition, I don't think you have to again mention that plain... Swelling is deep to deep fascia. Once you mentioned that it is a thyroid swelling and uh, it moves with deglutition. Gurushanta Pasar? Yeah, I don't know. You should not uh, see clinical examination. You cannot make the fascia to contract. Some people, the examiner insists that by extending the neck, you can make the fascia taut. Correct. But that Correct. is not the test. The only Correct. plane, if you are talking in a goiter, is contraction of sternocleidomastite. Because Correct. anatomically, thyroid gland is situated underneath sternocleidomastoid. So, make sternocleidomastoid contract and then look for the plane, whether it becomes less prominent or more prominent. That's all. It should end there. And the I second think point, you have mentioned, that, sir. You have mentioned that missed... horizontal and vertical mobility. Don't try that. Don't do it. Okay, that sir. horizontal mobility of a thyroid swelling means you are moving whole of the laryngeal complex. Yeah. Correct. Not the thyroid. Thyroid Correct. cannot be moved uh, uh, other than the larynx because it speaks to the larynx. Correct. So it doesn't mean anything. Don't try for this. Okay. So these three points in your presentation, absolutely, I say better don't bring those sentences in the presentation. One, the plane of the swelling deep to deep fascia. Second, the horizontal and vertical mobility of a nodule. And a third, tenderness and increased temperatures. Straight okay. way, just now, you take it out from your head. I, I and, feel so. Niranjan, if you say yes, yes, sir, I, I agree, sir. Implement this, yes. And I soft agree, consistency. Other fourth point is yeah. Okay, yeah. Thyroid swelling, which is soft. 
Okay. And sir, one more thing I wanted to clarify here for the benefit of PGs: Do they have to mention all those techniques of examination? Uh, they should know the if it is asked. Method. If it is asked, if it is asked, they should be in a position to demonstrate. Otherwise, it becomes only theory. So yes. sometimes even I do in the examination, I ask them to go and palpate the carotid and demonstrate how will you palpate for a nodule. They should know. We take it granted in online presentation that they yes. know it. but but uh, but uh, they should know it any time they can it can be asked any time because pavan has missed that sternocleidomastoid have you mentioned pavan sir yeah uh, you said in the extent but, you said the extent of the swelling is going go go to that this one inspection somewhere you mentioned no sir uh, beyond the anterior beyond the anterior, or... anterior on in inspection how did you confirm that finding in uh, palpation sir uh, by asking the patient uh, to turn the head to uh, opposite side uh, with the resistance uh, uh, we made the sternocleidomastoid contract so if, if the thyroid swelling is becoming prominent or less prominent what happened in your case sir uh, it is uh, in palpation it is that uh, not extending beyond the sternocleidomastoid sir it is in the anterior part Sir, 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 Ravi Shankar, sir, you agree, sir? Right side. I think it is going beyond the right, right, right sternomastoid. Left side, I agree, it is, in, you know, within the sternomastoid, but the right side, it is going beyond. Bilateral, how do you do, Pawan? Sir, uh, you have to do independently. Bilateral, pressing the chin against resistance. Okay, sir. Yeah. Guru Shanta Pasar, do you agree? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. The word, uh, what we expect in relation with the stomach pain studies, the swelling becomes less prominent, less prominent. and it goes underneath. Yes, yeah. underneath stomach pain must be. Right, right side. You know, it does go underneath, sir. And uh, other thing, what Niranjan asked about this. examination see what happens is the examiner will get tired of asking the same questions so somebody they will ask you know how do you examine thyroid you know whether you examine them from behind nap sigers method all these things remember you know pemberton sign all these things they will ask and if there are eye signs definitely they will ask you so i think all the students should know the different method, techniques and methods of examination that is examination with the patient you know you are behind the patient and then also from the side and uh, you know the all the eye signs you should know especially the important ones gurushanta pasar should you mention pemberton sign and berry sign in this uh here because the lower border is not made out in a right, part yes. of it so pemberton sign he has to mention and uh, berry sign uh, yeah obviously if it is absent carotid pulsation uh, yeah it is it is it is, he has to mention whether carotids are felt in a normal place or not he mentioned that so i think it's, oh, it's yeah. okay yeah yeah correct okay. and also that uh, this one cockers uh, test that, uh, that we don't uh, insist uh, for the student bed side yeah it is better not to do that test because you need to put a pressure correct so so uh, wanted to clarify not... a bit Yes. Correct. Okay. Not to do. Not to do. But they should know. Okay. Where it is done? In which, what type of cases Pavan. it is done? For one. Sir, uh, in the case of uh, large multinodular gaiter and retrosternal extension, sir, compressing the trachea. No, no. Cocker's test. Cocker's test. In large multinodular gaiter. Okay. Other PGs are there in the group, no? Here. Yes, sir. Indraja. Yeah. Yes, sir. Sir, what type of guide? It is done. Cocker's test, Indraja. Uh, Ultimately, either... what does it signify? What does it sir, signify? Uh, Positivity uh, of this test. Tracheal compression, sir. We have to look with the tracheal compression. Is no, no. What does it? Tracheal compression. What does it positive? What does it signify? Sir. There is a tracheal compression, sir. If it if it is test is positive. Not in many no. cases tracheal compression will be there, but that particular Definitely. test will signify something. Ah, sir, tracheal Malaysia. Ah, very good, very good, very good. 
So ultimately, Parker stress T is for a thinned out or a cachexic trachea. That is trachea malacia. So for that, it should be remember it should be a bilobar disease. One, it should be a long-standing long disease. disease. Okay, sir. Okay, and it is likely to be present in a benign disease, not in malignancy. Okay, so in a large goiter, bilobar disease of a longer duration. Okay, sir. These criteria are there. You then you are justified doing this test. What is the info significance of this? Why do you know this? Why do you want to know? Uh, sir, why do you want to know? Sir, preoperatively, um, if you assess uh, intubation, sir, uh, in case of intubation and uh, not is intubation, it intubation a difficulty or extubation. is it something else? Extubation ah, also, sir, extubation. extubation. Exactly, not intubation. Extubation, when you extubate, if they, their patients have those tendency, they will go in for strider and should, should be ready for tracheostomy. Tracheostomy, yes, yeah. Okay, so that, that those tests will warn you pre-op, but generally you should not do it on the bedside. Okay, sir. Okay, what was Pemberton sign found in this? What was the result? Sir, there was no facial puffy, puffiness, sir, and engorged veins when I um, demonstrated the test, sir. Okay. Go on. Sir, anything else, sir? He mentioned lymph nodes, right? He's mentioned lymph yes, nodes, sir. I think. Yeah. Yes, He's mentioned no other swellings, visible swellings. No palpable lymph nodes. Okay. And sir, uh, percussion, Pawan? Sir, uh, percussion I did, sir. Uh, so I heard uh, a resonant note only, sir, because lower border is uh, uh, appreciable. That means palpable. So... No, but Ravishankar sir said left left lobe lower border is not. You cannot uh, get below the swelling there on the left side. But still, I think the this one was uh, percussion note was uh, resonant. So there's no okay. dull note. Okay, so that there, there was no gross retrosternal extension. No, no gross retrosternal, but you couldn't get below the. Or the, we couldn't appreciate the lower border the, on the left side. That's all. Sir, Gurushandapa, sir, here one clarification. Do they mention in every case or only when they're suspecting retrosternal this percussion? Uh, there, there was a somewhere, there was a lot of discussion on this. Yes, yes. Uh, I think uh, normally you need not, uh, if the lower border is made out, there is no need to mention uh, the percussion in the parasternal area and sternal percussion. But if your other clinical examination findings are pointing towards uh, cancer or a thyroid malignancy, malignancy yes. one, yes. or if there are enlarged lymph nodes in the neck, then you need to percuss the mediastinum for mediastinal lymph nodes. Lymph nodes, yeah. Because in a case of papillary carcinoma, without having neck nodes, the possibility of having a mediastinal lymph nodes is around 5 to 10%. If mm. this percentage increases, if your diagnosis mm. is going to be a medullary carcinoma thyroid. Mm. Okay, so for this reason, you need. Otherwise, routinely, if the other findings are not suggestive, there is no need. But in this case, lower body is not made up, so you need to percuss the sternum and parasternal area. Sir, is there any difference between palpating different areas to ascertain whether it is mediastinal lymphadenopathy or retrosternal goiter extension? Is there anything fine uh, difference or... Is it the same? Same, same. Only percussion. Only per percussion. You need to percussion. Percuss percussion. percussion. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Direct percussion and parasternal percussion. Parasternal percussion. Okay. Yeah. Okay, Paul. Uh, sir, an auscultation, there was no audible bruising, sir. Or Where? Over the uh, swelling, sir. Uh, Over the swelling? Uh? That is superior aspect of the swelling, sir. Thyroid, upper thyroid. Pole, upper yeah. pole, you are telling both, Pawan, which one you want to in, uh, stick to? Sir, I didn't get it, sir. You said over the swelling, then you said over the upper pole of thyroid. Sir, upper pole of the thyroid only will demonstrate. Superior okay. pole. What, what does it indicate? Uh, if sir, there is growing? Um, in case of a, a turbulent, turbulent, sir, more vein vasculature, more turbulent flow will be there, sir, for the gland. So, in case of malignancy, increased vascularity will be there. Sir, is that right, sir, Gurshantapa, sir, or? No. 
Yeah, it, so. uh, it is. It is only for the increased vascularity of the gland. Okay, so we, question of brewery comes if your other presentation are indicative of a thyroid toxicosis. Thyroid toxicosis. Thyroid toxicosis. Yeah. Otherwise, not very often. Not for a malignant swelling. Yes. So should they mention or not? No, I don't think you need to mention it as long as you are. You know, clinical diagnosis is thyrotoxicosis. You have to mention it. Otherwise, I don't think you need to mention it. Illa, but for, for Illa, uh, Ravi Shankar, for completion uh -huh. sake, I think uh, for a completion of presentation, uh -huh. I think it is acceptable if they mention for a completion sake. But they should know, sir. No, no, sir. Yeah, I, I, yeah, no, yeah no, they should better know. not to mention. Yeah. If, correct, if they correct. mention, they should know where to palpate because that, that is the, uh, where to aspirate it. Sorry. Otherwise, correct. I will end up in soup again. Correct, 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 correct. Okay. Okay, Paul. And go back, sir. go back. Uh, why, sir, did you, why did you jump? Sir, this one, sir, um, thyrotoxicosis feature, sir, there was no eye signs, no peritibial myxedema, no tremors, and uh, normal uh, tendon reflexes are there, sir. Sir, so, I feel, is it is it sufficient to say there are no signs suggestive of hypo or hyperthyroidism? Or should they mention everything in detail? This case, uh, Pawan, this slide was not required at all. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh. uh, oh. If uh, there is symptomatology, where you have presented the symptoms first before examining findings, okay. if there is symptomatology, then you need to look for these signs. If there is no symptomatology at history level, there is no need to mention mm. this separately. Okay. No okay. need. And also, should they mention tremors and all and eye signs here only or in general physical no. examination? No, if, no. if there is no sir. symptomatology, don't mention at all. Or no, 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 no. There is no nothing suggestive of hyper or hypo or clinically no, patient. My, my, question, my question is, when there are signs in history, uh, sorry, when there are symptoms in history, where they have to examine all these things, should they mention yes. it at the end of the palpation auscultation or it should be in the general physical examination? General physical examination. Physical examination. Okay. So I, everything will come first. You know, the tremors, the eye signs, everything. And then you go to the local examination. Okay, sir. Go on, Paul. And sir, systemic examination was normal, sir. Okay. And to, to, to summarize, a 63 years old lady complaining of gradually progressive painless swelling in front of the neck for 15 years with a recent increase in size since uh, four months and change of voice since three years without any features of hypo or hyperthyroidism. On examination, a thyroid swelling of size 9 into 6 centimeters uh, with the nodular surface um, with uh, variable consistency with uh, form inconsistency with the uh, 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 sir, uh, you have to be very clear. Sir, you here, said variable and you said very firm now. The firm inconsistency. Uh, sir, here the lower border is... Uh, not palpable on the left side. Not palpable on the left side, sir. Hmm. Uh, with no, no, no cervical lymph nodes and no features of hypo or hyperthyroidism. Okay, what is your diagnosis? You want to give diagnosis or differential diagnosis? Sir, uh, I would go for a differential diagnosis, sir. Uh, uh, sir, okay. uh, uh, sir, uh, first, uh, my provisional first diagnosis is uh, non toxic multinodular goiter in uh, euthyroid state, sir. And my second uh, differential diagnosis is uh, um, carcinoma of thyroid, sir. That is follicular carcinoma of thyroid. You'd, follicular carcinoma, you, you can't say that. It can be papillary also. Thyroid, Long standing goiter with recent change, we probably, because it is 15 years history. Yes, Baban. Yes, if, for example, you have multiple lymph nodes, then you can say probably papillary carcinoma or if there is rib metastasis or skull metastasis or some bony metastasis, then, uh, then you can say possibly a follicular carcinoma. Follicular. Okay, sir. Otherwise, I don't think you can mention any histologic variant. Okay, sir. And here with non-toxic multinodal nodular goiter with probable retrosternal extension on the left side. Okay, sir. Gurshantapa, sir, anything else? Sir? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can we can accept his both the diagnosis. Okay. Yeah, both both are acceptable. Fine, Pawan. How do you evaluate now? Uh, sir, um, 
after history and clinical examination i will all done like, how do you have already done, done it done. there is no need to say that again so we already done that i would like to you... go for a blood investigation sir first i will do thyroid profile sir t3 uh, t4 and tsh sir okay and yes sir so what, what will it tell you t3 t4 tsh yes sir uh, whether uh, the patient any hypothyroidism or hyperthyroidism or u thyroid state you can know the status sir okay to expect based on history and to be anything else what will be usually the thyroid status in uh, multinodular goiter sir uh, if features are there uh, then it is a toxic process sir uh, toxic nodular goiter uh, no no then, based on your history okay go on hmm. here not toxic sir and uh, i would like to do ultrasound uh, next sir uh, to know the extent of the swelling and uh, um, whether the swelling uh, consistency of the swelling in solid or cystic uh, consistency is there and uh, uh, any lymph node involvement is there or not and a retrosternal extinction there and uh, i will do ultrasound guided fnac fnac of which swelling Uh, sir, uh, um, dominant swelling. I mean, uh, right, uh, right lobe of the thyroid. Whichever is dominant. Dom you can't say right lobe. Okay, sir. Now, of the dominant nodule or a suspicious nodule. FNAC has to be done. Yes, sir. Of of a very dominant nodule or a suspicious nodule where there is mixed echogenicity, <laughs> both solid and cystic elements, irregular nodule. all that okay, which we described if it is a suspicious uh, nodule then suspicious, suspicious nodule is the first okay. reference if okay. it is a multinodular goiter then in that if there are no suspicious nodules then it has to be a dominant nodule dominant nodule okay sir anything else and for uh, one yes sir that uh, on ultrasound you should not mention as a consistency consistency is not the correct. sonological finding correct you have mentioned consistency don't mention that point okay sir it's a clinical examination finding sonologically echogenicity okay. hypo is it hypo echoic iso echoic or hyper echoic yeah or is it a purely cystic lesion or a complex nodule yes, in a, a nodule wise is it a solid nodule complex nodule purely cystic nodule nodule so these are the specific words you need to use when you describe sonography of thyroid okay sir okay yes sir what what did the uh, what did the t3 t4 tsh and the not the ultrasound show sir uh, ultrasound i didn't have sir actually okay the anyone the, else can tell pooja or sir only can tell i think yes yeah see the t3 t the she was u thyroid and ultrasound showed uh you know the uh, left lobe to be larger than the right though clinically the right lobe appears more larger the left lobe uh, as we said clinically was extending down into the retrosternal area and the left lobe was larger there were dominant nodules in both sides and uh, so two sub two nodules for uh, you know fnac was done which showed uh, colloid goiter but there was uh, um, this one one um, is one where the um uh, the hartel cell was seen but uh, i i spoke to the radio the, the radiologist and also the uh, histop uh, cytopathologist and they said you can get hartel cells normally it is not this was not a hartel cell adenoma or anything like that it was just a, a you know colloid goiter okay sir okay pon uh, uh, what will you do now sir um... next if the, those findings sir um, sir uh, for this sir uh, uh, my second diagnosis is uh, um folly i mean carcinoma of thyroid sir uh, to rule out a metastasis i will do metastatic workup sir no just now sir said no fnac pawan yes sir pawan you heard niranjan's uh, question 
with with the tfnac findings what will you do next ha huh. that's all make it so simple no he has already you he has dragged your already session of one point why do you want to bring cancer here so because you already cancer you, you should know, not drag him to how, cancer this is how you will land up in uh, the danger of failing Okay, with those findings i said definitely is benign yes sir what is what will you do next uh, sir uh, uh, first uh, um, sir I, i will first uh, suggest um, um, pre optimization of patient then i will go for total thyroid acting sir i will advise what, patient what, what is pre optimization what will you do necessarily <laughs> yes, sir uh, pre operative okay. counseling you sir uh, what is the need of uh, total no no preoperative counseling is different preoperative right. optimization is different you only said preoperative optimization you have come with an axe and you are digging very heavily Pavan, what is there to optimize is there anything to optimize here in this she, lady clinically she has no comorbidities is she diabetic yes, and hypertension sir. yeah and you yes. just have to evaluate those things yes, and uh, see if uh, you know she is fitness evaluation for fitness for surgery that's all you don't have to say pre optimization pre optimization is for people who is for example oxygen saturation is low or you know you said the performance status is more than 90% and it is cog is one if there is renal failure or whatever diabetes very totally uncon uncontrolled diabetes hypertension uncontrolled in those and, conditions we have to stabilize only then the you have to do pre optimize here this is ladies normal asymptomatic she has hypertension and uh, diabetes we just need to evaluate the fitness for surgery that's yes. all that is all we have to say okay sir anything uh, one more thing you miss for one before going for surgery what will you do in this lady one important thing sir uh, to with the history blood test indirect no. uh, large yes I Yes, that is very important. No patient has voice change, pre or ideal, sir. Yes. yes, if you don't do ideal and if uh, something happens post op, then you will be blamed. If the if at all, I don't know whether pre ideal. If there is already nerve involvement, if it is real malignancy and already there is a palsy, if you don't document it and if something happens post operatively, you will be blamed. Okay. And it is mandatory for all thyroid surgeries. I think uh, Gurushan Tapa sir. to document yeah, uh, uh, yeah document nowadays uh, in the i have i seen many clinical case discussions they they want a video laryngoscope video laryngoscope, video laryngoscope yes video laryngoscope to know the status of vocal cords one and second yeah. you did not mention chest x ray and neck x rays correct you did not correct. mention you need to know the tracheal position for one you need to know yes. and uh, uh, and uh, the lower body is not made out so you need to have a chest x ray and a lateral view neck x ray yeah okay so if that is showing a lot of findings then yeah. this lady becomes a candidate for a ct chest comment comment on the x ray pavan is there anything what whatever sir mentioned just now sir here the um, this is a what? what is all this sir this one sir ah oh. this a calcification sir calcification oh. what, what, what is the position of the trachea what type what, what type, type of calcification micro or macro macro calcification sir indicates what sir benign nature sir mm, benign nature what is the other type of benign nature calcification you find in thyroid region Yes. egg shell calcification egg shell calcification okay. they are nothing but uh, whatever the nodules you are feeling uh, around the follicles they will have a calcification in the border of the follicle that is why rim, the rim shell. rim of the nodule will get calcified and that will appear like egg shell yes. okay in position of trachea retrosternal extension that is what gurushan the professor was telling no comment on them Here, position of the trachea appears in cancer. Huh? Not in central, man. It's not up here. It is central. Sir, it is at central. Yes, sir. It is in the midline. And uh, there is no lateral. You see, there is no tracheal compression. Is there any tracheal compression there? 
नो सर हाँ कंप्रेशन सर मीडिया स्टाइल नो मीडिया स्टाइल वाइडनिंग कैन यू सी एनी वाइडनिंग देयर नो सर नो मीडिया स्टाइल वाइडनिंग दीज आर द थिंग्स यू शुड कमेंट ओके एनीथिंग एल्स सर वीडियो लैरिंगोस्कोपी इज नॉर्मल ओके फॉर योर इंफॉर्मेशन ओके ओके पवन यस सर हम्म देन व्हाट विल यू डू सो ऑल दिस आर डन यू नो द फाइंडिंग्स नाउ हाउ विल यू मैनेज हाउ विल यू ट्रीट दिस लेडी सर वुड लाइक फॉर टू गो फॉर टोटल थायराइडेक्टमी इन दिस पेशेंट्स व्हाय सर बोथ लोब ऑफ द बोथ लोब्स ऑफ थायराइड आर इन्वॉल्वड सर मल्टी नोडुलर पवन व्हाई डू यू वांट टू ऑपरेट ऑन दिस लेडी सर सर शी हैड रेजिस्ट व्हाट आर द इंडिकेशंस सर कंसीडरिंग हर एज एंड इट इज अ लॉन्ग स्टैंडिंग गाइडर सर and uh, more than that what is she has become symptomatic there, change of change of voice is there sir she has become symptomatic sudden there is recent increase in the size of the swelling yes sir she is sought medical attention so if the patient herself is almost you know requesting for surgery because otherwise it has been there for long long time and it she has not bothered seeing seeking medical attention the fact that it is become very prominent and increasing in size and possible change of voice i think and also fnac is not 100% there can 100%. be 3% false positive uh, yeah. false negative false negative rates and also a long stand uh, uh, even in multinodular goiters earlier there was a perception that solitary nodule are more prone for cancers now the latest uh, uh, recent uh, uh, literature review says even in mng it is up to 30% in some yeah, series yeah. so 3 to 30% can still have cancer actually you are right multi niranjan multinodular goiters are equally prone to develop equally cancer. prone to develop cancer as well as, as, as yes gurushanda pasar yeah he has to put all of these points uh, to justify his surgical treatment Yes. Whatever uh, you people have mentioned now, you have to put in one, two, three, four, five, like that. Uh, for one. Okay, sir. Ah, uh, you you should go back and make notes. In a given case, they are not indications for surgery in M N G. No, given case. Okay, sir. Given case. If it was malignant, for one, if F N A C uh, showed papillary C A, what would you uh, what will you do? Uh. Sir, with the palpable lymph nodes, sir, uh, in the same findings only, sir. Same findings, man. Everything is same. F N S C says it is papillary C A. Sir, I I will go for a total thyroidectomy, sir. Uh, the... Will you do anything else, sir? Central neck dissection, sir. Investigations wise, what did we say that day? In patients who are whom you suspect papillary carcinoma ct scan is it not required to look so, at the nodal metastasis nodal and also the extent, extent of the disease we is better delineated by ct scan right yes sir we discussed this about 4 3 4 days ago right why sir. are you not answering man sir Okay. Gurshanda Prasad, do you agree? Total thyroidectomy with central lymph node, or will you take only total thyroidectomy? Oh, I don't know. Uh, uh, I don't know. Students should not get confused. Uh, yes, that's why. That's why I asked the question. Exam. Ravi Shankar, so what do you? Huh? What will you this, expect? Uh, CACP. We had a discussion on this. Yeah. Uh, for their sake, uh, to make it simple, uh, in a case of crude case of CA thyroid with yes. the N zero neck. N zero uh, neck clinically N zero neck. Yes. Uh, the treatment would be only total thyroidectomy. The elective central neck dissection in a N zero neck it is only for medullary carcinoma. Carcinoma thyroid. thyroid. Yes. Medullary yeah. carcinoma. 
So if it is other two well-differentiated cancers, that is papillary and follicular, if clinically it is N0 and imaging has not shown any nodes, then it is only the total thyroid. Sir, so the okay. what I was wondering is of the size of the size, a nodule, nodule, nodular thyroid of this size, is ultrasound sufficient or do you still need to go for a CT? According to the guidelines, if the clinically it is N0 and sonography has not revealed any nodes, there is no role for CT neck. CT, okay. Yeah, there is no role. According to the guidelines. Anything else, sir, you want to ask here with respect to management? Yeah, they should know all the details of uh, total thyroidectomy, how it is done, uh, how to prevent hypothyroidism, how to identify the nerve. How do you manage the hypocalcemia? Uh, there are many things which probably, yeah, they should know. Yes, Paul. Uh, total thyroidectomy was done, I think. Yes, sir. Sir, did you do uh, only only total thyroidectomy or no lymph node? Okay. No, no lymph node. Okay. And uh, okay. we we were able to see all the far, four parathyroid and uh, three of them we were able to just leave it in situ. And one of them was kind of stuck to the thyroid. So we just gently dissected it off and implanted it in the substance of the thermocladomastoid. Okay. Pawan, next. Uh, drain, drain was kept, sir? Yeah, drain was kept because the, the gland was very deep. You know, it was it, because, you know, the it belied, we thought it was, you know, very, very much on the surface. But we had to really dissect it you know, quite, and it was quite deep. So there was a large space, and we thought it is better to keep a drain. And so the, we kept the drain for two days and take, to, took it out. The first day it was about 100 ml. Subsequently, it was hardly anything, and we took it out. Pawan, yes, what Pawan with this HPR, what do you do? With this HPR, what do you would like to do with this HPR? Sir, uh, total thyroidectomy only. No, 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 you have no. got this histopathology, HPR. HPR, it is there now on the screen. Yes, sir. So, what you would like to do now for the patient? Sir, um, next, what will you advise this patient? Sir, thyroxine, sir, uh, thyroxine will advise. And okay. You know, what are the methods of giving it? What are the types? Methods, I don't know, sir. Exactly. With your, with hey. your intention. Sir, usually. Intention. Pawan, what did we day say that day? Yesterday. Day before yesterday only it was discussed. Uh, sir, high dose uh, thyroxine. No, what is that like called? Suppressive. Suppression dose, sir. Suppressive and dose here, and here. supplementation. Here, what here do you want to do? Supplement or suppress? Sir, to prevent hypothyroidism. No, no. What are, what are you going to do? Give supplementation or suppression dose? Sir, supplementation, sir. Ah. Well, where do you supply suppression? Sir, uh, in case of uh, uh, medullary carcinoma. Not medullary, man. We discussed it. Medullary is not dependent on thyroxine or TSH, rather. What well, are the tumors that are what are the tumors that are dependent on TSH? Sir. Uh, Papillary and follicular carcinoma. Ah, so in papillary and follicular carcinoma, it is dependent on TSH. So you need to suppress the TSH. So you give high dose thyroxine so that you keep the TSH at the level of 0 0.02 to 0 0.05. But if it is a supplementation or you know the you know thyroid, what do you call that? Um, basically, your you know repl replacement therapy. So here it is not suppression, but replacement. So replacement is just give th you know, th thyroxine, which is required to maintain the day-to-day -day metabolic function of the patient. So the TSH levels are not that important. You don't want to go hypo, uh, this one, hypothyroid, but you, you should give, give them regular doses. Pawan. Yes, sir. Okay, you have done surgery. Immediate, what are the two immediate complications you will be worried about? Two or three immediate complications. Sir, in this can case, I, in can this I case. add uh, yes, to sir. this? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, for the PG sake, three terms you should remember. Supplementation, 
replacement suppression supplementation is the word where you need to you are going to give a thyroxine when there is a part of the gland is existing in the neck which is not sufficient enough to maintain the bmi like you have done a hemithyroidectomy you would like to give yeah. something for some yes, time yes. that is supplementation or a person has got a hashimoto's thyroiditis where gland is getting fibros you need to give supplementation to maintain bmi that is supplementation replacement you have knocked out thyroid there is no secreting organ in the neck so you need to replacement you need to replace that what was expected normal production that is called replacement dose suppression you need to there is no gland existing you need to give a higher dose the idea is to suppress not thyroxine production idea is to suppress tsh production that is in malignancies so supplementation for a hemithyroidectomy give for some time replacement benign disease total thyroidectomy suppression total thyroidectomy malignant disease yes Understood? sir i think i Good. think it is very clear yeah the cm words should be used even if you are not interested capital letters united commas yes sir <laughs> okay hmm paul what are the complications immediate complications it will be worried about here yes, sir bleeding sir immediate complications before that if bleeding comes little later yes, during extubation uh, sir any vo any vocal cord palsy um, that is one thing that is one thing long standing goiter we will see the movement of the vocal cord sir long standing goiter yes, sir. sir was sir mentioned i mentioned tracheomalacia sir yes so you should be careful about during extubation Yes, sir. For strider, watch out for strider. Yes, sir. Okay. Hmm. And then recurrent laryngeal nerve. Okay. Then your extubation is extubated, shifted to post-op ward or wa regular ward for observation. Suddenly, patients develop a swelling. Sir, hematoma, sir. Any bleeding? Bleeding. So, what will you do in that scenario? Sir, sir, immediately we will. Uh... remove the sutures sir we'll take shift the patient to the ot and uh, we'll remove the sutures and we'll evacuate the diaphragm without doing anything yes, sir right you will no sir intubation and all we'll do sir. so if preferably you in the bedside you try to remove the sutures and okay. try to intubate either in the ward or in the uh, ot immediately you to shift yes, and sir. then look for bleeders okay sir and then anything so, else sir i think there are there are many post operative i think uh, hello hello ha ah, yes, yes sir yeah 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 on table also there are few things about trichia malacia especially such the case which you have presented where there is a long duration uh, swelling on table also surgeon should predict that whether this person has got trichia malacia palpating the tracheal ring after removing the specimen so you suspect if your suspicion is very high on table itself ask the anesthesia person to deflate and pull the tube little out and see whether it is really compressible so so that you can you can be careful in the after extubation okay okay that is one thing and second yeah identifying the parathyroids and identification of parathyroid doesn't rule out that person may not develop hypocalcemia yeah. post op doesn't guarantee you why pavan why will it not guarantee even if you have identified parathyroids and saved them what happens uh, uh, sir vascular uh, insufficiency i mean uh, vas compromisation of vascular supply You should, you should you should power you should there are there are definitive words same words you should temporary is ischemia ischemic insult okay. to the parathyroid ischemic insult insult to parathyroid because it derives its blood supply from the thyroid vessels and you have ligated the thyroid vessels 
there will be temporary ischemic insult to the, the parathyroid glands and then it will recover over a period of time. So that is the word you have to use. Okay. What about uh, anything else, Pawan? After apart from bleeding, what you will watch out in the wards, especially Sir, in a case of total parathy total thyroidectomy, which is related to parathyroids. Sir, uh, we will see for uh, signs of hypocalcemia. Sir, um, what are they? Sir, perioral tingness will be perioral perioral what? numbness will be there. Sir, perioral numbness and tingling. Tingling, yes, sir. And numbness. And then? And uh, muscular tremors. What is Schwastek sign? What is carpopedal spasm? Carpopedal spasm, yes, sir. What is Schwastek sir, sign? Sir, uh, in Schwastek sign, uh, if you tap over the um, uh, geogomatic process, uh, so the facial, facial twitching will happen, sir. And uh, in case of carpopedal spasm, if you raise the systolic, if you raise the uh, blood pressure more than the systolic BP, there is a uh, um, when do you expect uh, hypocalcemia to manifest? First day, second day, so immediate post-op. Sir, uh, second day, sir, second day to top this. Commonly, it is uh, around 48 hours, 48, 48 hours, hours or beyond 48 hours, but early hypocalcemia can also happen. Okay, sir. But usually, most often, it is in the 48 hours or okay. more than 48 hours. Gursandapa, sir, any clarifications here, sir? Yeah, yeah, after, after 48 hours, after 48 hours. Third day, usually, it happens. 48 hours. Anything you else? Should, here, what, yeah. what Ravi Shankar was asking for one. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, the presence of these two signs indicate that the calcium is below 7 and that becomes an indication for parenteral hypocalcemic okay. correction. Yes, Simple. Those two tests. Okay, sir. Anything else, sir? Nothing. Nothing. Thank You're you. A, uh, comment, sir, on presentation. Pawan's presentation. Yeah, there are a few things which we have mentioned to be corrected in the clinical examination. Uh, thyroid examination is like a mathematics. It is a methodical examination. The, you should know which come, should come the next one. Okay, so at history level, we need to have, and you should have a anatomical and a physiological status of the diagnosis. Okay. Yeah, yeah overall, it was good power, good case. And also, sir, uh, in thyroid, I think in exams, uh, thyroid, breast, and uh, hernias, you should know everything. Even a smaller uh, this thing mistake will be considered as a bad this thing. Do you, what do you say? Correct, correct, correct. Definitely, definitely. Uh, Abdul is asking one question. Any role of prophylactic oral calcium supplementation? Uh, this you should, uh, in fact, we have a patient in the ward just now. Uh, operated. This, if you have proved in the pre-operative scenario that patient has got already hypocalcemia before doing surgery, then it is better to have this practice. Otherwise, so you need uh, to, so is uh, pre-op calcium levels mandatory for every thyroid? Uh, it is not mandatory. It is not according to the guidelines. Okay. Yeah, it is not a mandatory. Okay. But when do you, when will you suspect, sir? When will you do that? Uh, nothing. Uh, if by chance, if you already somebody has done, or if you think that there is a hypoalbuminemia features, okay. the patient is protein like uh, by by albumin level she has gone down because albumin also decides about uh, the calcium levels. For one, what is that uh, calcium called? If albumin is going to decide the calcium levels, sir, I didn't get it, sir. If I say albumin is going to decide the calcium levels in the body. Yes, what is that calcium I am talking about? Protein bound calcium, man. Then, ionized calcium. So ionized calcium ionized is the no, ionized corrected calcium, calcium levels. Corrected, corrected calcium, calcium levels. levels. That is more specific than total serum calcium. Okay. Ideal time for doing serum calcium levels after surgery. 
Praveen is asking. I think it's 48 hours, after 48 hours. No, after 48 yeah. hours. Yeah. Or if the patient develops symptoms before. Symptoms. Yes. Before, yes. 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 Okay. Ravishankar, sir, your comments? Yeah, Pavan, see, the, I think majority of your presentation, all the necessary points were there. But somehow you gave the impression that you are you're not sure of a lot of things. So the presentation should become more, you know, so, you know, more firm and more precise. Uh, and you, you, you know, I think some of the mistakes the Gurushanta Pasar mentioned, you should correct. Okay. Sir. Okay. I agree with uh, both uh, Ravishankar sir and Gurushanta Pasar, and it has to be more fluid and it has to be in a systematic way. As uh, Gurushanta Pasar was telling. What I have noticed in exams is especially these three uh, topics, the breast, hernia, and thyroid, they won't tolerate even a smaller mistake. And uh, Pavan, you should present more. Anybody else has any doubts before we conclude? No, sir. Yeah, yeah. If there is no doubts, I think uh, we will conclude. I'll just Thank mention, you, uh, yes, sir. Uh, the histology is here. It's multinodular goiter. The serum calcium levels were, I checked it because we had done a, a total thyroidectomy and it is normal and uh, patient is fine and, uh, you know, we removed the drain and she is doing well. So that is all good. need to add. Good, sir. Okay. I think we will conclude, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. 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 Thank you